You know what time it is. It's a sitting down video. I've got the little mini coffee maker going, so you know she's serious. This man is named Drake Bell. I think most of us are familiar with him. A couple years back, he was given, I believe, a year or two years probation for a charge of attempted child endangerment and disseminating matter harmful to juveniles. For the layman among us, that means essentially sexting with an underage person or sending, uh, having conversations of a sexual nature. Now, I should note that Drake still contends that he was unaware of this person's age. Nonetheless, he did plea guilty to those charges. Now, the general online community of late has not been particularly charitable when it comes to potential offenders in situations similar to grooming, child endangerment. For the last several years, Drake has very much been anathema. Back when this stuff was kind of breaking, he came out with not an apology video so much as a uh, explanation, I guess, of what was going on, universally panned by people in general as well as some prominent voices online. Fast forward to today, we seem to be experiencing an uncanceling of sorts. I saw several videos on TikTok of people kind of going back over the details of this case, saying how some of it was a little shaky, Again, mentioning that he claims he didn't know that this person was underage. People saying that he deserves a second chance. Keep seeing comments constantly about Drake Bell being a predator and Drake Bell being um, an abuser and essaying victims and all of this stuff. He was charged with child endangerment. That is not the same thing as sexual assault. He was charged for texting a minor who also lied about her age, which was proven in court that she lied about her age and that sh then she continued to stalk him and show up to meet and greets and his shows and all these other things. Now don't get me wrong, Drake Bell has a large platform, he's a child star, he grew up in the limelight, all that, and he should know what's right and wrong as far as texting someone underage. But before you go in and calling him an abuser and all of that, you need to go look at those court documents and realize that he never was sexually explicit with her, um, never sent images. Um, never did anything physical with her and that she number one lied about her age number two her age was not in her bio or anywhere on her page and number three she continued to seek him out none of these voices were anywhere to be found back when this was first breaking so what changed well this documentary quiet on set just dropped and it is exploding it goes over uh, Nickelodeon in the early 2000s and a lot of the predatory and evil behaviors that were happening within that company, especially as relates to Dan, Dan Schneider. Him being a potentially very evil and predatory person is not really news to anybody, but what is news is Drake's account of a particular employee who abused him when he was underage. Now look, I want to make one thing clear about why I'm making this video. I don't have a stance as to whether Drake should be uncancelled or cancelled or anything in between. I don't feel like I have thorough enough knowledge of the case to make a hard and strong decision on that. What's interesting to me is that us finding out that Drake Bell is a victim of abuse is the thing that turned the tides in his favor. When it comes to Drake's sentencing in 2021, Drake was found guilty by the law. How we feel about his sentencing morally should have absolutely nothing to do with him having been a victim. The two situations have nothing to do with each other from a moral perspective. If you were a victim of abuse today, your story should not at all be affected by the revelation that your abuser was also abused 20 years ago. So again, I have to ask, why are we reevaluating Drake's situation now? Why didn't we reevaluate it as the conversation was happening when all of this went down in 2021? And the answer is, the abuse bombshell from the documentary builds Drake as a character in our minds. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing inherently. Anyone who hears Drake's account, regardless of whether they view him as an abuser himself or whether they view him as someone who was mischaracterized, anybody should feel sympathy for what he went through. The problem, in my opinion, is that within our culture at large, it seems that we're only capable of placing people 
in the good guy or bad guy categories. This thing really tugs at our heartstrings, so we want to define him only by our sympathy that we feel right now in this moment. I'm not old enough to know whether this is particularly a generational phenomenon or not, although I feel like we've always had reductively black and white depictions of good guys and bad guys in mainstream media. We're certainly experiencing a lot of this right now. Reminded me of this Avatar The Last Airbender series on Netflix. The actor says, we also took out a lot of the elements of how sexist Sokka was. I feel like there were a lot of moments in the original show that were iffy. Even though that's one of the character's primary development arcs. Wait, this is a good guy. He's not allowed to have that characteristic. He's not allowed to be like that because he's in the good guy box. My point is that we seem to form opinions about people with the same lack of nuance and the same one-dimensionality of a Netflix producer who's getting paid way too much to destroy your favorite characters. The fact that Drake was almost universally condemned in 2021 and the tide is quickly starting to shift in absolutely the opposite direction right now tells me that us knowing about Drake being victimized as a child makes us not want to believe the 2021 case. Because for some reason, we don't want to try to fathom someone having been a victim and then also victimizing someone else. Because that's too complicated for our Hollywood-pilled brains. If that were not the case, all of these counterpoints about the 2021 situation would have changed the tide of public opinion back in 2021 when we were having this conversation. We didn't learn anything new about that case in the last three years. Now, I want you to remember that the PR industry exists for a reason. There are people who are paid six figures just to figure out how to pull these emotional strings and change public opinion about people. Now, I want to be clear. I am not saying that Drake's appearance in the documentary, his retelling of what happened, was a PR move to change the tides. I am, however, saying that there are PR professionals who have pulled exactly moves like that. The point is that you are susceptible to it. I've definitely found myself having my opinions solidified about various people just because I feel like, well, it kind of seems like generally people are saying this. Generally people, generally people are thinking this. But it's important to keep in mind that general consensus changes and it changes for very fickle reasons. So it is a fallacy to be going about your life forming moral stances on various individuals just based off of the bandwagon. Anyway, all right, serious video out of the way. <laughs> I don't know, I need to decompress by bullying some Therians or something.